Um, today, we are very delighted to welcome you to our uh, webinar on to introduce the Rural Finance and Investment Learning Center. We've asked our colleagues and partners at the Food and Agricultural Organization to share with you uh, their platform and all the very interesting resources and materials on rural finance and more recently on investments in the agricultural and agribusiness space. So I am very delighted and pleased to welcome our speaker, Emilia Hernandez, who is an agricultural finance officer at the FAO. Today, Emilia will talk about the Rural Finance and Investment Learning Center um, and their plat this platform that provides cutting edge knowledge resources for um, the promotion of rural and agricultural finance. And as I said, and he'll speak to you about that more recently, they've added a new pillar on investment in agriculture. Just a bit of background, the RFILC, as many of you know it's referred to, is managed by the, world, uh, by the uh, FAO, but it's supported through the CAPFIN partnership, and that is a donor, the CAPFIN partnership is a donor collaboration group. Uh, between EFAD, FAO, UNCDF, JIZ, and the World Bank. Um, AgriFin has participated in the CAPPIN partnership over the last several years, given our mutual interest in sharing knowledge in this space. So it's been a wonderful partnership, and we're really happy to have Emilio on board today to share with you all the exciting resources and in the new resources that they've developed through this partnership and, and a pooled funding mechanism. Um, so Emilio would discuss all the key features of that, walk us through the, the, the platform and give you indications on the newer publications and, and all the resources that are there. Um, he will really focus on how financial institutions and, and staff in those organizations and those that support those organizations can benefit from the resources in the information disseminated by the RF, RFILC. Um, before we get started, uh, for those of you that are new to the AgriFin webinar series, the way that we organize the dialogue um, is that we ask you throughout Emilio's presentations to send us in the questions um, while he's presenting. He'll present for about 25 or 30 minutes, um, but please do write in your questions. And myself and Valdete will be here organizing those questions, and then I will have a facilitated Q&A session um, with Emilio for about 15 minutes at the end of his presentation. Um, we apologize. We cannot, this is just the best way to, for time management and to handle the quality of the audio. So I am, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Emilio, and I'll come back uh, to you all during the Q&A session. Thank you. Uh, I guess Maria said, uh, my name is Emilio Hernandez. I'll be delighted to share with you a, a bit of the work that we do um, as part of the CAPFIN partnership and specifically on the services that the Rural Finance and Investment Lending Center provides to practitioners and, and uh, donors and any public or private agent working in, in, in rural development and rural finance. So uh, today, what I'd like to take you through is, is a little storyline that goes Start with a brief history of uh, how the Rural Finance and Investment Learning Center came to being, supported, like Maria said, uh, by uh, the agencies that conform the, the CAPFIN partnership. And then we'll move straight into uh, discussing some of the key functionalities that uh, provide services to users uh, who are uh, we target, uh, who we are targeting are practitioners, uh, any any type of practitioner that's interested in rural and agricultural development. And then um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, new and upcoming services that are re the result of a um, uh, CAPFIN agenda of work that um, 
in addition to the learning center involves the creation of uh, knowledge products and capacity development products uh, for your use. And then I'll just uh, quickly conclude uh, on, on some thoughts about the vision and the mission of, of the Learning Center and the CAPFIN in the context of um, the current state of knowledge of rural finance and agricultural investment. Okay. Um, so again, uh, it, it, Maria already started uh, uh, introducing the, the Learning Center and CAPFIN. This is a Really, the, the, the web platform started in 2004 and was the result of the start of this rather informal collaboration between IFAD, FAO, GIZ, and later on UNCDF and World Bank joined. Um, and it all came out of the uh, need and perception from the leaders on the technical units that deal a lot with rural financing, those agencies of kind of putting together all the knowledge product that this you know, rather big agencies that have a very long tradition of working in rural and agricultural finance uh, are producing and to make it easily available for users to access them, those, those products. Um, since then, the Learning Center has become uh, probably the largest information gateway that is wholly specialized in rural finance and agricultural investment. Um, you can find a library with over 3,500 documents covering all sorts of issues and uh, also a, um, um, a, a, a body of training materials that practitioners can use to, to in their everyday work. Um, so uh, in addition, you can become a member of the Learning Center, and currently we have about uh, 5,000 registered members from 150 countries, which uh, can get um, uh, a, a monthly newsletter event in three languages, um, to highlight some of the new additions that the website um, uploads every month. Um, but what's the kind of editorial focus of the website so you're more familiar with what you can find and, and the spirit that drives um, the content of the, of the Rural Financing Investment Center? First, um, capturing partners uh, in their everyday work, independent of of, of the partnership that they created, have worked with a lot of public and private partners and stakeholders in their everyday prog programs, right? Um, and in, in working with them and for them, um, they have a lot of projects and programs related to country interventions, core operations, but also knowledge products like policy research and capacity development. And these partners, uh, and these public and private partners and stakeholders and the CAPFIN agencies are producing tons of material um, that is going out there and each agency and each actor has their own knowledge management activities that try and put the lessons and the experience out there. So what the CAPFIN efforts aim to do is at consolidating all that knowledge, all those knowledge products and put them more or less in a hub where users can go and access them in a, in a more convenient manner, a more organized manner, and be able to capture and appreciate the diversity of perspectives and dimensions being studied and worked on by capping partners and the, the, the stakeholders whom they work with. So that's a bit the, 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 the driving force uh, behind the editorial work that uh, the center does. And now I'd like to kind of uh, briefly surf the website to show you some of, uh, some of the key features. Um, perhaps um, uh, one of the most important um, sections of the website is the library. And, um, and here, you literally, we're trying to create a, a, a web uh, page that allows you to access and make you feel like you're entering into a library wholly specialized in rural finance and investments. But to make the surfing um, a bit easier, we encourage uh, our users to register. Because once you register, the website is equipped to kind of tailor um, news, events, documents, uh, training material that fits your profile. So not only starting by the language that you prefer to work with, uh, since we're targeting a global audience, 
um, but also on some of the topics that you might be more interested, given the and many dimensions that are involved in promotion of uh, rural finance and agricultural investments. So once you're registered, you're able to um, um, receive this monthly newsletter in your language with uh, contents that are relevant according to your, the profile that, that you've imputed. And while you serve your recommended related readings, that um, that are uh, correlated with the profile that we have. So when you go to the library, you can find four subsections and just briefly explaining all to you what, what the logic of this uh, organization is about is, first we've got the business support. Um, this is where you will find all the non-financial aspects that are critical for the delivery of uh, agricultural and rural finance, financial services. Um, because it, it, it's such a, a, a core part of uh, the work that experts do in this subject, this, this non-financial, this tackling of non-financial issues will be devoted as a subsection for it. Then you can go and, 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 and to the section of rural financial service where you really focus on the type of financial products and the dimensions of product design, delivery, uh, risk management, internal control, etc. Um, related to different products. And then we also have a section on policy advice that deals mostly with the enabling environment, which is so critical as well. Um, and, and then we've added, like Maria said, uh, more recently, uh, a section on investment, which is the other side of the coin uh, of, of, of rural and agricultural financial services, where uh, we, we really try to put all the knowledge on um, what happens uh, and what are the, the issues from um, those people making investments and requiring financial services. So you really get into the issues of uh, how the agro industry works and the challenges that exist, which have tremendous implications on uh, what type of services they may need and what type of risk management strategies are, are more optimal. Um, Moving on, I'll give you a little example of a subsection of the library just for, for you to get a feel on how to use it. It's an enormous library, so we really made a, efforts to have a search engine that uh, can facilitate your, your, um, your search. You can search by any keyword. You can search by year of publication. You can search by type of document. It could be a book, it could be a report, it could be a research paper an academic article, etc. You can focus your search on the country that you're interested in or uh, uh, a geographical area. And um, in this case, we're in the business support services. Uh, we, um, we, you're provided with a recommended list that is um, tailored to your profile. I'm just showing you a snapshot of the profile that I get uh, when I log in. And, um, and you can see the language. You, you, you'll find material that is in English, Spanish, and French. And you can surf the website in those three languages. Um, but overall, uh, the, these are the four subsections. Uh, and uh, just to give you a feel, uh, our users, um, we've been able to identify popular subsections for our users uh, in the last train. And that gives us a little bit of a pulse of where uh, in general, at least in our community of, of users, um, the questions are. So in business development support, you get a lot of questions on contract farming, on how to um, strengthen saving groups, value chain development, and all the, let's say, business development services that go into agribusiness uh, <coughs> support. When it comes to the financial services, we, we hear a lot of uh, interest in financial cooperatives. Um, that have been traditional players, uh, but um, are coming back into the scenes uh, in the efforts of providing more formal financial services in rural areas. A lot of interest in Islamic finance, remittances, and payments and insurance. So that reveals a little bit of where the knowledge frontier and the questions are being asked, and we provide a lot of, uh, we try to provide what is out there, what we know, what is known on, on these issues. Policy advice, a lot of in, in interest in uh, agricultural finance innovation. You'll find 
specific section on that. Uh, banking for the poor, so reaching um, the um, bottom of the pyramid. Prudential regulation is critical. Is a lot of questions about um, um, whether rural and agricultural finance uh, deserves uh, a specific prudential regulation, or there must be features that account uh, for the uh, within the regulation to promote uh, uh, rural financial services. There's also a lot of questions about gender mainstreaming. So all of these are subsections that exist that you can go there and find a lot of material on these issues. Um, um, so ideally, you, you would be you'd be able to access um, what what, the, what is being produced around the world on these topics. And when it comes to investment, there's a lot of interest in private equity investments in agribusiness, which is a uh, a trend that uh, a lot of uh, knowledge is being produced, investment promotion, public-private partnerships, how to do them, and uh, the use of uh, planning tools. Uh, we have a specific section that receives quite a bit of business like Rural Invest, which is a FAO program, that FAO software tool that allows you to plan public investments to promote, to promote um, um, uh, rural financial services. Um, moving on, the other big pillar is the training section. So before it was a lot of knowledge products uh, where you learn concepts, you learn about the challenges, and now we move on to on on uh, kind of taking what what are the good practices and be able to have training material that allows you to apply those best practices in your everyday work. And and we have different types of training products. Online lessons um, are really, you know, ready-made lessons where you can go uh, as an individual and uh, go through a course, uh, either facilitated, that means that uh, there are schedules for the delivery of that online learning, cor uh, learning course, or non-facilitated, which means you, you can take it at any point in time. It's automated, there's no facilitator involved and you can just go through it at, at your convenience. Then there's self-study guides, where it's, again, as an individual, you can go through a course. It's not an e-learning course, but it's a set of modules that you can follow, read, do exercises, and uh, build your capacity on, on whatever topics you're interested. There's the guide for trainers that is mainly uh, directed at training organizations that are interested in um, Taking, making reference to existing training products so that they can use them to conduct specific trainings in their everyday work. So you'll find training programs and courses that are meant for trainers to study and, and extract and make reference to some of the um, um, training courses that have been developed in their uh, daily classes. And then uh, we have training tools, with, which are little um, uh, knowledge pieces that uh, uh, trainers, again, can pick and, uh, and are, you know, given copyrights, they can actually take and impute in their own training courses as uh, cases, for example, or exercises or group dynamics that might be useful. And then we have the section of training opportunities, which is more advertising um, upcoming training events or uh, periodic training events and provides you with a list of institutions that have traditionally provided courses. So if you are a person that is interested in receiving a course and your institution wants to send you to develop your capacity, you can get some good ideas on where to, um, where to go. Uh, in this section, okay? And here I'm, I'm showing you just an example of, of how this subsection looks like. This is the guide for trainers. So you can find courses for, uh, trainers can find uh, new courses that are related to enterprise development, agricultural investment promotion, uh, loan analysis tools, agricultural value chain finance, uh, et cetera. No? Um, and you can search those items as well. Uh, similar to how you can do it in the library. And here I'm telling, I'm showing you a, a, an example of a recent uh, training programs that have been developed uh, with support of the Catherine program uh, 
Um, that means that technical units um, within FAO have gathered um, a lot of material coming from uh, captain members and others and put together training packages that have been um, developed by technical units, um, reviewed by pedagogical experts, and have been widely been uh, tested and disseminated uh, throughout all of our uh, projects and in partnerships with, with many of training organizations. Just to give you an example, we've been, all of these courses, we've been uh, teaching them um, for the East African community in many of SAO projects. We have been teaching them um, for specific personnel of uh, IFAD funded projects in Africa. And uh, we've had even these four courses form part of the curricula of the new rural and agricultural finance program uh, that the Caffeine Partnerships has co developed with the Boulder Institute of Microfinance, for example. And, and, and these are courses that we'll hopefully be given every, every year. Um, so this is just to give you a, a taste of the parallel work in addition to the learning center that the Captain Partnership does. And then you've got the sections of news and events. And this is, this is a section that I, that I personally like because we have our editor-in-chief, Mrs. Uh, Ivana Gegenbauer, who constantly populates with the, the help of additional editors uh, that look for material in French and Spanish, uh, what's going on in the world, uh, what are the upcoming exciting events. Um, I'm, I'm showing here um, some examples of what you would find if you, if you go right now and check it out, um, that uh, you might be interested. So if you're looking for a conference, uh, where to present your work or where to update yourselves on what the current issues are, you can come here and, 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 and look at it. And not only that, sometimes, it happens to me a lot, you go to a website, you find an event that's very interesting, but you realize that it has passed, right? So what we try to do is that for some events, we are able to um, get uh, materials from them, like the presentations that were provided, preceding papers that were published, and we upload those. Uh, so you can uh, go um, to past events and see uh, what was discussed, what material was shared, and have access to it, even though it has passed. Um, and the news section is, is a pretty nice one where we basically upload uh, relevant articles, recent articles coming from uh, magazines and, and newspapers that relate to rural finance and agriculture investments. Uh, you know, um, that is a very nice read, uh, uh, early morning read, in, in case you're, you're interested. It's something that you can spend, you know, 10 minutes uh, in the morning checking it out. In terms of new services and, and upcoming events, uh, we have a brand new discussion forum. Uh, that's the last uh, section that, uh, of the Learning Center that we will look at. It's um, fully operational right now. It has just started. It's a space where all registered members can come and share their ideas, pose questions, share their work with the rest of the community of, of members um, so that they can spark debate and, and can get some interesting discussions going. So this is a feature that we will start promoting very uh, proactively. Um, and uh, we hope that you, you check it out and you would like to share some of the work that you do there. Um, we have uh, policy research uh, publications that are coming out that will be uh, uploaded soon. Um, specifically, part of the Capfin agenda, uh, we're starting to uh, see the results of a two year field research project in Latin America that will be published uh, in October, uh, very focused on identifying risk management innovations for the delivery of financial services for smallholder families. And uh, this is part of a series. The same analysis is being made for Africa and Asia, and this type of, of body of work will be published soon. And soon we will start offering e-learning courses through the website as a, as a platform. Um, we are working with e-learning specialists to take some of the flagship courses that uh, um, I talked about earlier and transforming them in, in an e-learning format and be a facilitated one. So we could periodically offer some of the high-demanded uh, 
training programs uh, online and uh, recruiting, uh, uh, let's say, students from uh, the networks, uh, traditional networks, like, for example, AFRACA, the African Rural and Agricultural Credit Association, APRACA, the Asia Pacific one, and uh, ALIDE, Development Finance Institutions Association in Latin America. So this is, uh, stay, stay tuned, early next year we'll start offering e-learning courses uh, through the platform. Um, they will run on the Learning Center and, um, and um, it's another option for you to, to of training to follow. So that being said, uh, that's a very quick surf on the website, the services and the type of activities that Caption Partnership does. And I would like to conclude a little bit with this uh, highlighting this vision that I think it's, it's very important currently in, in, in our professional network. Um, the particularities of rural finance and agricultural investments really, you know, if you compare them with other sectors of work in development, um, um, is that there's so much interdependence among the different stakeholders in agro-rural economy that you need to consider uh, very carefully the individual client needs, which is a, a daunting task. But in addition to that, you need to really master um, the industry dynamics and the policy enabling environment. So because that topic is, those topics are so broad, um, this uh, area of work requires uh, a lot of multidisciplinarity. And that has uh, induced all of the professional agencies like the captain partners and the people that they work with to focus on different dimensions. Um, and, and so they're delivering, they're producing great work in know-how, uh, service delivery know-how, capacity development, policy research, and they're covering different dimensions uh, 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 because, because they need to focus. And what the captain partnership is, is, is vision is, is to take all of this work and put it together so that you have easy access to um, all of that. And by having easy access to all of that, you get a more comprehensive view of the challenges. And over time, we hope that builds a consensus among this professional uh, uh, community um, that, uh, that uh, if you compare it, for example, to the microfinance industry, uh, where there's a lot of consensus of what the good practices are, or the uh, formal banking industry in industrialized uh, nations where there's tremendous consensus of what good practices are. Um, uh, in the case of the rural finance and agricultural investments, that, that is still uh, a, a, an ongoing process, and we hope to contribute to that process through efforts like this one. So. Become a member uh, and try it for yourself, and uh, please let us know what you think. With that, I, I um, thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you, Emilio. That was very interesting, and it's it's fantastic to see the the development of the platform further in this, in especially in the new area of investment and and really all the the training resources um, that the RS. ILC is providing to the community, and I really appreciated your focus on the comprehensiveness of service delivery, business development, and the enabling environment, which are the integration of all of those areas are so key to, to propelling the development of rural and agricultural finance and investment. So thank you for that. I uh, just wanted to, uh, I have some questions coming in. Um, there's uh, some questions about the resources and how how do you all, um, because you've built this very dynamic community and have a huge listserv in that, how do you source your content? How do you get your resources? You have some that's internal. It, are the resources just with it, those of the, um, Captain partnership organizations. Could you speak a bit about how you, how the platform sources the content, and then further, maybe a pitch to people how they can contribute um, to the platform. 
that would be great. Great, thanks. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, we source uh, from from uh, everywhere, really. I mean, we the the idea is to source knowledge products and training materials and events that come from obviously not only the captain partners, but pretty much all of the leading organizations in uh, working in the area of rural finance and, and agricultural investments, um, which um, many of them are our, our close partners and, and associates. So we source from, from all of those, everywhere we can find. We have a dedicated editorial team composed of uh, three people plus the um, officers in the, in the Edu Business and Finance Group of the AGS that kind of uh, supervises work, including myself, um, which uh, they, they scout whatever is out there. And the, we scout basically with the notion of covering um, geographical areas, uh, you know, content that is relevant uh, 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 in the sub-regions. We have Spanish-speaking regions where uh, the issues and the, 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 the areas of interest might be different. The events are certainly different. So we try to focus on English-speaking, um, Spanish-speaking, and Franco Francophone-speaking regions. And they uh, con constantly, uh, these editors uh, suggest uploads. But in addition to that, as part of being a member of the Learning Center, uh, the user can uh, submit uh, contributions to the content of any of any kind, and that will be reviewed by by our editor Ivana, and then later published in the appropriate section of the site. Uh, just a follow-on question to that, I have someone asking. Um, this first of all, thank you very much. They wanted to thank you for this initiative. They had a follow-on question about a specific subject matter on um, on the topic of mobile and digital payments and finance, and that the role and the potential of that for um, you know pushing out the frontier in rural and ag markets. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know, in our, in our based on on on. on our own experience here in FAO and the knowledge that we're constantly monitoring from our uh, colleagues in, the, in, the, in, the, in this network of professionals, um, there is no doubt that there is a tremendous potential of using um, technology mainly through uh, for reducing the transaction costs that are so uh, prohibitive when trying to reach rural areas and uh, poorer rural households, especially those dependent on agriculture. Um, the question is, and, and we've seen some of that potential come to, to, to bearing in, in countries like Kenya and countries like Tanzania, um, but uh, there are other regions of the world where we don't see that happening. And the, let's say there are other conditions uh, like uh, a, a very vibrant agribusiness community, uh, probably the financial institutions that are uh, more solid and, and more developed, where the application of those uh, um, of those technologies are, is not taking place. And there's a lot of that's where the knowledge frontier I think lies. Uh, when I monitor the efforts of, of people looking into it, is why that is what what is the what are the conditions that will spark the use and trial and you know trial and error and experimentation with mobile technology or technology in general for delivery of financial services and um, a lot of the discussion and, and in my personal experience uh, the issue of um, IT regulation and, and and financial regulation play play an important role. It, it depends a lot on how feasible it is for financial institutions and telecom companies to come to win-win uh, commercial agreements, and that will depend very much on the regulation because that will shift the bargaining power from one into another and might uh, make or break a deal. Um, that's in short, yeah. <clears throat> Great. Thanks, Emilio. Um, 
The other area that I found very curious, you seem to be building out quite extensively on the training resources, both um, online training resources, but face-to-face training um, programs or or, or through projects and through also your uh, the unique partnership with the Boulder Institute. I think the community here online today would be really curious to hear more about those uh, trainings, um, how in particular, because a lot of people online today are from NGOs and, and international organizations, how they may be able to um, get some of their beneficiaries and their organizations into these trainings uh, in the field. Yeah, that's that's very much our hope. Um, we the, the trainings that we develop, uh, we you know uh, the Caffeine Partnership Partnership uses very much. Uh, uh, um, naturally on their everyday projects where there's where there's a demand for it. But um, f- from the cap thing partnership perspective, uh, we are looking outwards of our organization, trying to systematically facilitate um, the delivery of those trainings um, to, to the open public. So that's a bit of the motivation of, of working with the Boulder Institute of Microfinance that provides a steady platform when many of these trainings can be offered every single year um, in, in three different languages. Um, that's the nature of uh, our work uh, as well, uh, focused on e-learning, where we would, in a very cost-effective manner, again, profiting from the use of uh, technology, be able to deliver periodic trainings uh, at a global scale. So um, we would, our intention is to um, announce uh, uh, periodic trainings uh, two or three every year so that people can register and, and go through those trainings. You can always go through that training um, uh, um, going to our website, download the resource, studying them. But um, of course, the the idea is that you you can also count with a uh, well qualified instructor that would um, transfer that knowledge um, in, in a more effective manner. So e learning and our partnerships with uh, training institutions are the venue that we are seeking to periodically offer those courses and have users uh, access them. Oh, that's fantastic, Emilio. Thank you. Um, is there any, I, I, from what you told us just now, it seems like the best way for people to be informed of that is to join the the, pla- the, the platform, become a member of um, the RFILC. And in that line, could you talk a little bit about what membership means in, in versus non-member? Because you have a lot of people that come to your site but not necessarily become a member. Is there, you know, what's the additionality? If you could speak about that, uh, do they get advance notice and uh, uh, priority access to these trainings and materials? If you could speak a little bit about that, I think it would help sort of get people involved in, in becoming members. Yes. Um, yeah, the, the, the benefits of becoming a member relate mainly to your ability to receive uh, updates of these new events and new knowledge products being uploaded every month, right? You get a newsletter where you can see, you try to uh, select uh, the, the most interesting additions to the Learning Center so you can find out about the training opportunities, new publications, new research studies, new, um, um, new debates going on. Uh, in addition to that, you, when you surf, your surfing experience uh, becomes uh, much more uh, uh, enjoyable because once you become a member, you feel a profile, and based on that profile, when you log in, um, the the website uh, can recommend you readings based on your searches, and uh, it can uh, also uh, uh, you can suggest uh, additions to the website. Non-registered members cannot 
suggest additions to the website. So if you're interested in having your uh, publication um, hosted in the Learning Center, you have to become a registered member so that you can submit it. And also now you have access to the discussion forum, which you do not have access to if you're not registered. Um, so you can start debates, um, post questions, and uh, share your your work and your ideas. That's 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 uh, basically the benefits of, of being a brand member versus not. So it's I think it's it's quite a quite a, a big difference uh, in terms of the services that you get. That's that's great. I think that's really important. Sometimes we we don't take that additional step, but you outlined some some key benefits uh, to that. And I really am curious to hear more about that smart search engine because often we go to sites and we can't. So it's it's really encouraging to hear that that you're making it easier to to wade through materials and finding you know more personalized learning paths. So that's fantastic. Um, I think that, um, that I don't have. We don't have any more questions to you, uh, Emilio. We really thank you for your for um, for your time today and sharing information. I think it's important to do these periodic uh, information blasts because um, the RFILC has been around for a while, but it's really been uh, putting in and, and growing extensively uh, with thousands of resources that. Um, people can go to uh, looking at all of that interface between business development, financial service delivery, and the enabling policy environment. Um, you're really unmatched in that regard um, of being a one, one-stop shop. So I, I thank you for sharing with you all the developments and where you guys are heading uh, with the community today. Um, it was very interesting uh, for us. So. What I'd like to do now is just um, end out. We have a few announcements from our side that people may be uh, interested in learning about. Um, again, we want to make a pitch to everyone to uh, be sure to, to get on the AgriFin site and check out the new agricultural lending video series that AgriFin has recently put out there. It's really... Um, as you know, as the community, I hope knows by now, in contrast to the very extensive uh, platform that we just heard about, AgriFin really is more of a niche uh, knowledge sharing for uh, practitioners delivering, for bankers and, and professionals delivering agricultural banking services. So in line with that, our, the agricultural lending series are short animation clips we call them the primer and ag lending. Um, great to share with bank staff and people that are in, you know, client facing um, with the farmers and agribusinesses. So do share those. We've tried to make them as available as possible. We have uh, created some AgriFin apps so that people can use them on smartphones. Um, share them in a training a forum. I hope that the CABFIN uh, or the RFLC may be able to use them in their training of, uh, of their project beneficiaries. So that would be a great uh, way to get, get the word out. So do, do share those with your uh, colleagues widely. Um, also another announcement, um, our sister platform of FarmD, and that's uh, the Ag Risk Management team here at the World Bank, is hosting a very important uh, strategic conversation on building resilient supply chains. Farmers and food industry tackle the shared challenge of climate change. This is a, a really important topic um, for uh, the global community uh, of professionals focused on agricultural development writ large, and um, our team here at the bank is holding this very high-level dialogue in London on October 19th. Um, the event will highlight concrete examples of how farmers in the food industries, food companies are, uh, are or can work together to build more resilient supply chains. Um, companies will share their experiences of deepening supply chain engagement and um, will even have be hosting 
farmers and farmer groups that are de that describe the impacts that climate change is having on their production and get their point of view what's needed um, for them to continue to meet this um, increasing global demand for food. So we'll be uh, featuring that on our website, hop on the website, and hopefully Valdette can maybe even share that with you as she, she follows up um, uh, with you after this uh, webinar. Um, again, as we always do in, in, in terms of uh, uh, evaluating how we do and the services we offer to you, we'd just like to ask you to fill out a brief survey um, that should be popping up on your screen, screen here very shortly, in a few seconds. And if you could fill that out, take, you know, a couple minutes, it's, it's really quite easy. If you could fill that out, it helps us to refine and enhance the webinar services that we bring to you. Um, in the meantime, I guess, if you have any remaining questions until we meet again, please do visit the AgriFin website. And of course, please get on the RFILC and check out all the interesting materials that uh, Emilio has presented to you today. Um, but in signing off, I just, on behalf of the entire AgriFin team, uh, again, I'd like to thank you, Emilio, for your uh, sharing uh, of all the interesting and new developments on the space and, and explaining a bit more about the CAPFIN partnership and how people can get involved. I think that, um, you know, we really believe here, and I know you share this uh, very sincerely, that uh, collaborating and knowledge exchange and peer-to-peer uh, -peer and all that really is helping to um, propel the development of this industry. So with that, thank you again, and I'd just like to wish everyone a good afternoon, good evening, and we look forward to speaking with you again at our next uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay, bye-bye.